So before I dive in, I need to address the translation we used for our scripture this morning. We do typically use the New Revised Standard Version, which is what we heard, and generally it's an excellent translation, but this morning it really falls short with a few disastrous consequences with a few key words. So to set the story straight, verse 7, we heard the Lord God formed man from the dust. But here are the Hebrew words. The Lord God formed Adam from Adama. That's the Hebrew. Adam from Adama. That alliterative and poetic phrase may better translate as God formed a human from the humus. The point is clearly the relationship of humankind to the soil from which they were created, not the gender of God's creation. Dust to dust. God created humans in the same way and out of the same substance as every other living creature, from bacteria to boulders. And while there is much more to be said about gender in the creation stories, I'll leave that for another Sunday. Today, our question is, where are you from? And we are reminded in this story in Genesis that God created humans in a place, a place that was good and a place that was specific. So we begin our summer sermon series around the theme of I've been meaning to ask, questions that build community, invite curiosity, vulnerability, and deep connection. So we're beginning at the beginning, or one of the beginnings anyway. One of the creation myths that doesn't just come at the beginning of what we know as the Bible, but one of the foundational stories about who we are and whose we are. And we start at this beginning because we too are at a new beginning. After so much time apart, we are just beginning to figure out how to be together again and about who we will be together. This is a moment of opportunity to not just fall into our old habits, but to connect more deeply to witness to one another who we are and what we have been through. So where are you from? How would you answer that question? My answer is always much longer than the poor soul who asks me wanting to strike up some small talk with what they really would want to hear, just the name of a place where I was born. So is it for you the place you were born? A place you grew up? or have lived the longest, a place some or many of your ancestors came from? Is it the place you live now? What is often a perfunctory get-to-know-you question is really a deeply spiritual and sometimes complicated one. And of course, this question is also one that can be asked in ways that seek to divide, further alienate, and entrench a sense of us and them. The Racial Justice Task Force showed us a clip that illustrated that a few months ago in worship. You may remember it. It was used as a springboard for conversation. And our aim today is to take this question in a different direction. Rather to know and learn about where we are from and where our neighbors are from can connect us more deeply to one another and to our Creator. Because God didn't just create humanity anywhere didn't just place us randomly on this green planet, but formed us in this garden in Eden, the place from which waters flow. And not just any waters, but those four rivers, specific in name and in the elements that would have been found in their banks. I admit I never paid attention before to the fact that there is this whole paragraph about the names of the rivers that water the garden. Probably like most other lists of names in the Bible, I was just used to skipping right over it. What does it matter anyway that the garden is defined first by the waters that flow from it? Well, it may show how far we have come from answering where are you from with the name of a watershed or closest river. That tells us a lot about our society, that we expect the answer to be a name of a place a town, a state, a country. It speaks of our alienation from the land, that we can be from a place without really knowing that place, 
knowing its lakes and rivers, trees and flowers, insects and animals. What might it be like to ask someone to tell you a story of the land that they come from, or the waters of their childhood? When did they first eat a fruit picked straight from a tree? What did it taste like? Was it in a garden of their own cultivation or on a school field trip that took them many miles from their home? If you don't know where you are, you probably don't know who you are. Those words from Ralph Ellison's Invisible Man point us to the heart of the creation story we hear today. Knowing where we are from helps us understand who we are. So where are you from? I invite you to take a moment to close your eyes and remember a place a piece of land or body of water that formed you. What plants do you notice? What does it smell like? God formed us from the dust. That place is a part of you still. And as you remember that place, you might choose to share that memory with someone during coffee hour today. But of course, we are from more than just land. We come from people, too. A college professor of mine began every, every semester with introductions. And like in every other class, we were to go around the room and say our names. But then this professor prompted us with a different kind of introduction as well. Who are your people? She wanted to know. She explained that when she, where she grew up, the black Southern culture she came from, you would be identified by your kin. You didn't say where you were from, you said who you were from. Oh, that's John's little girl. Oh, their mother works with so-and-so. Oh yeah, my cousin and your cousin are friends. It was a way of drawing one another into relationship, of figuring out where one another fit in the web of common life. Because sometimes where you are from is not about a place at all, but rather the people. If we were to read a little further in this chapter in Genesis, we would hear that God soon decides that Adam needs a partner. It is not good for people to be alone. But my professor was also drawing on the tradition of Ella Baker, the longtime freedom movement leader. In that sense, she was asking us, where do you come from, but who do you identify with? When you have to take sides, where do you stand and who will be there with you? Ella Baker knew how important this was as she sought to build lasting coalitions of people fighting for justice. Barbara Ransby writes that she pushed educated college students to see illiterate sharecroppers as their people, their allies and their political mentors. She pushed northerners to embrace southerners in principled solidarity. She organized back and forth across various color and cultural lines and across generational divides. Understanding who and where we come from helps us see our commonality and mutuality with one another. So I invite you again to close your eyes if you'd like and ask yourself, who are your people? Draw them up in your memory so that you can see them in your mind's eye and feel their presence with you this morning. They may be your family of origin or your chosen family. They may be friends or mentors who have influenced you along the way. Maybe your ancestors, known or unknown. What if we asked one another to tell those stories too? God created humanity out of the dust, in mutual relationship with all of creation, and for relationship with the earth and with one another. I began the sermon with the phrase, God created humanity from the humus. And I'll admit I had to look that word up. I'm not much of an ecologist or really even a gardener. But my understanding is that humus is the key ingredient in topsoil. It's a mysterious and hard to define element that is as much a process of decomposition and recreation as it is a substance in and of itself. But most importantly, it is essential 
to crop cultivation. Soil without humus doesn't support life. And this dust of life exists just beneath the surface, in the feet or in the foot below the ground, and it is on which all human nutrition and existence depends. So many of us may be not inclined to take the Bible literally at times, but in this case, the book of Genesis may be quite literal in its description of creation. We, humanity, are indeed formed from the humus. We are still dependent on it millennia later. And of course, symbolically, what is just beneath the surface forms us. It is what we depend on for life. Let us go below the surface of small talk with one another, recalling the people and places we come from, cultivating mutuality with all of creation. This 4th of July weekend, I leave us with a story from a group of indigenous people of this country that took place on the West Coast a few years ago. In West Berkeley, California, Ohlone tribal members spoke to their community about a proposal to build condos over a sacred shell mound burial site. At one time, their tribe used massive structures of shellfish to mark burial sites, hence the shell mound name. And this site contained burials that were thousands of years old, perhaps the first ever habitation of the area. And although the remains were deep below the ground, Clearly, the possibility of the site being disturbed during construction and erased by a new development was deeply troubling. But the Ohlone leaders did not just refuse the development, they proposed an alternative to create a new mound that echoed the shape of the original and could then be planted in California poppies. It would restore native vegetation, and create a dance arbor for Ohlone ceremonial use. It would essentially turn a piece of currently unused land into a site of both visible meaning and recreation, recreation, for Ohlone tribal members and their neighbors. Corinna Gold, one of the leaders of the project, described it as an opportunity for all of us to remember our compassion, conscience, and civility to learn to be human again, together. They understood the sacred importance of honoring both their ancestors and the land, and of bringing what was beneath the surface to new life in relationship with their community. Let us pray. Creator and creating God, you formed us from the earth to live in relationship with it. We give you thanks for the people and places that have nurtured and sustained us, formed us into who we are. May we come to appreciate in one another all that is beneath the surface. And may we share our stories in mutuality, cultivating trust and building the beloved community. Amen.